Hello everyone, Trantia here, and welcome back to Persona 4 Arena. I'm taking time out of my day from listening to the new Black Midi album to record this episode, so you're welcome. So in the last episode, we finished Teddy Teddy's story, and now we have two stories left, and well, it's time for more summary, and time for Yosuke. Oh, I'm so tired. What a busy day. Golden week, huh? The holidays fell on pretty good dates this year. Juness will be open for business during Golden Week 2. Come for our exciting Golden Week events, stay for the low, low prices. Uh, then again, it's my fault for taking this shift. I can yap all I want, but the only reply I'm going to get is my own echo. I begin to feel lonesome, so I start mopping faster. Such is life for Yosuke Hanamura, a high schooler working at Juness, Inaba's only shopping center. I get a lot of crap thrown in my direction because I'm the manager's son, but thanks to dealing with all that stuff, my skills have improved and now I sometimes act as supervisor. Today's just another day on the job. This city, Yasu Inaba, Inaba City, is a real country town that doesn't have anything more than rivers and mountains. At least it's got a train running through it, but it isn't useful for commuting to the big city. The place isn't pretty enough to get sightseers either, it's a total dead spot. Really, just coming to Juness to shop is a pastime in, in itself for the people of this town. Our store carries more than just groceries and daily commodities. There are specialty shops selling fancy clothes and other stuff too. There's even a food court with a playground on the roof. We hold events up there sometimes. All that stuff makes for some really busy weekends. When there's an extended holiday, you start to see cars with out-of-town license plates in the parking lot. And now it's Golden Week. This is the busiest this place gets all year. However... <laughs> well, I'm taking tomorrow off. Yeah, that's right, I'm free. Normally, this definitely wouldn't be the time to be taking a day off. I still have a look at my dad's face when I turn on my request, but I didn't care. I absolutely can't miss tomorrow. Because... My partner's gonna be back! And by partner, I mean the guy who transferred in, in from the city last year, Yu Narukami. There's a reason I call him my partner and not just my friend. Ooh. See, he and I solved the case that happened last year in this tiny little town. And it wasn't some dinky-ass problem like finding a lost cat or anything, although I, I did do that a few times. This was a big... Or this was a big? This was big. A series of murders. On top of that, they weren't just any ordinary murders. The crimes took place in the world inside the TV. There were these monsters called Shadows living there. You and I somehow got this power to defeat them called Personas, and from that point we started fighting and investigating. Luckily, we came across allies who also had that same ability, but even then, every day was a fight for survival. Together, we overcame danger after danger. With comrades like these, the word friend just doesn't cut it anymore. That goes double for you. I'm indebted to him, and I trust him with all my heart. So partner feels more natural than best friend. Unfortunately, my partner had to return to the city at the end of the school year. But we promised to meet up again during Golden Week. That was two months ago. It seemed like an eternity. I couldn't wait. But he'll be back tomorrow. I've only been working so hard lately so I could take Golden Week off. I'm so pumped about tomorrow that I just can't relax. Alright. Time to go home and get ready for tomorrow. Let's go, Teddy. Teddy's this, uh... He's, um... Uh, he's this animal suit thingy that we met last year inside the TV. He's as feather-brained as they come, but you just can't bring yourself to hate him. I ended up being the one taking care of him. I took advantage of his appearance, and now he works as a costume attention grabber for Juness. He's supposed to be on the same shift as me. Teddy! Hello? Where is that guy? That's weird. He usually comes running in, ready to leave work. I asked the cleaning ladies, but nobody's seen him since lunch. This is getting strange. He looks laid back, but he is a responsible worker, so I doubt he's slacking off. Is this him? Oh. Chie. Yo, Chie, what's up? Oh, I'm glad you picked up. Are you free to talk right now? Chie Satanaka. She's a fellow classmate at Yasugami High School. She's another one of the comrades that fought with us last year. Those of us who used personas formed an investigation team and went about solving the case. <laughs> oh, I fucking love summary, bro. We did it because we were the only ones who could find the killer and stop the murders. I love the, the C-U-Z cuz. He was our leader, just so you know. Chie was in charge of... brainstorming, I guess. Oh, and steak. 
I mean, not that she was our leading expert on steak, but she just liked it a lot. I remember she was psyched for Yu's return, too. Is she calling to confirm stuff about tomorrow? She probably just forgot where we're meeting up. I decided to mess with her a little. Yeah, I just got off work. Didn't I already email you about tomorrow? You deleted it without reading it, didn't you? I didn't delete it! Ha, huh, she's so defensive. I didn't even send her an email. <laughs> Hilarious. She doesn't have a phone. Anyway, she suddenly gets serious. Anyway, I heard a sort of disturbing rumor. The Midnight Channel might be back again. Huh? The Midnight Channel? That takes me by surprise. The Midnight Channel. That, that was an urban legend that became popular last year. If you stare into a blank TV at midnight while it's raining, you'll see your soulmate. Sounds sketchy, I know, but it was true. I mean, you didn't see your soulmate or anything, but it did show somebody on the TV. Long story short, whoever was shown on it was the next victim in the series of murders last year. But it turned out that there was some crazy guy doing the actual dirty work. In the end, we showed him and put the urban legend to rest. Or at least so I thought. There's no way. Who told you that? An underclassman at our school. I tried to get more details out of her, but she took off in a huge hurry. Dude, you didn't growl at her or anything when you asked her about it, did you? I can see it now. She ain't grabbing the poor kid by the collar, scaring her out of her wits. She'd do it, too. She doesn't stop when she gets an idea into her head. N no, I was completely normal. At least I think I was. So anyway, the girl she was with said something about a fighting show. I didn't get any details, but she didn't seem like she was lying. Fighting show? That's nothing like what was being shown on the Midnight Channel last year. Maybe she was just mishearing the other students talking about some normal sports program. No, wait. I think I overheard some customers talking about that today. Whoa, whoa. They were talking about the Midnight Channel? And hey, the forecast says it's going to rain tonight. Why don't we check it out? Yeah, good call. If this is for real, we can't ignore it. But if it turns out to be a hoax, you better buy me dinner. Hmm, then you owe me steak if it's true. What? Anyway, I'll talk to you later. I was trying to lighten the mood, but things didn't really turn out that way. I'm sure my partner would have done a better job at it. He'd say, don't worry, I'll take care of it, or something. Still... Midnight Channel, huh? If it's true, that guy is a disaster magnet. I think you're underselling it, man. <laughs> Come to think of it, the incident last year started the moment you came to Inaba. If this new Midnight Channel member is true, I'm gonna start calling him the Mystery Maker. That is, if it actually shows anything. Honestly, I'm around 90% sure nothing's going to happen. There's no way anything's going to show up. Oh yeah, I should call Kanji too, just in case. Kanji is another member of the investigation team. He's a year younger than the rest of us. Because of his looks and the way he speaks, people get the impression that he's a violent hoodlum. Poor dude. He's actually a hard-working, honest guy. He's not the type to screw around at night, and I'm sure he'd be eager to answer a call from an upperclassman like me. <laughs> huh. He's not picking up. Maybe he's too busy knitting something. Despite appearances, Kanji has a surprising knack for delicate needlework. And he's no slouch either. His work's as good as people uh, who make a lot of money selling this stuff. Oh yeah, his work's as good as people who make a lot of money selling this stuff, yeah. Man, Kanji, open up a Nazi shop, my bro. I, I will buy from you. Up until last year, he'd keep, he kept that hidden because it doesn't mess with his image. But a lot of stuff happened and now he's not so hung up on it. He now sells his handmade knitted dolls at his family shop, Tatsumi Textiles. They're actually pretty popular, and lately he's been carrying yarn and knitting needles with him at all times. Ugh, come on, answer already. Guess I'll try his home phone, too. Tatsumi Textile should be closed now, so I shouldn't have a problem getting through. And to back up my theory, Kanji's mom picked right up. Hello, this is the Tatsumi residence. Oh, I'm sorry to call at such a late hour. Uh, this is Yosuke. Um, is Kanji-kun there? Oh, hello, Yosuke-kun. As for Kanji... Huh? Did something happen? I can't find him. You can't? I thought he was sleeping in the living room, but he wasn't there when I checked in on him. I thought he might be with you. Oh, yes. We're going to have an all-night study group, and I bet I just missed him. I'll wait up for him here. <laughs> okay, then. Good night. Oh, man. I totally panicked there and came up with some lame BS. Kanji's not there? He left without a word, without a trace. I suddenly thought of Teddy, too. No one's seen him since this morning, either. He didn't tell me anything about where he'd be. Hold on, could this be? Ugh, why am I freaking out so much? This is Kanji we're talking about. 
So what if I can't get a hold of him? I'm sure he's fine. I try to reassure myself that everything's okay, but my anxiety doesn't go away. First, this new Midnight Channel thing, and now people are disappearing. Give me a break, man. <sighs> oh, damn it, I just want to fall asleep. Now, real quick, we got some fun stuff to talk about here. So not only is, is Teddy's bed, j Teddy just lives in the closet, but if you look over on the right there, uh, we see that Yosuke's got some, some CDs on display. My man, I'm right there with you. Uh, but if you look, those two in the bottom, middle, and bottom right, that is definitely Nickelback and Linkin Park. I'm not quite sure about the other ones. I mean, the, the one in the top, the top left, could maybe look like the Persona 3 soundtrack a little bit, I guess. Maybe that's what it's supposed to be, but I'm not sure. I mean, I can look at it to, for reference. But, yeah, I don't know. But it, the, those two are definitely Nickelback and Linkin Park. That's very funny to me. I figured Teddy isn't home either. I grabbed some food and headed to my room. It's been a while since I had to wait for midnight to watch the Midnight Channel. The wait is always, is always so long. I can't do anything but keep looking at the TV, so I started fiddling with the remote. This is iNews, and here are our top stories. We begin with a hijacking of a domestic flight to Kagoshima yesterday morning. Police began their interrogation of the suspects today. Man, things are crazy all over the country today. Last year, Inaba was all over the news. People I knew were being interviewed left and right. Then again, I didn't have any time to pay attention to any of that stuff until we closed the case. Jumping in and out of the TV all the time really takes it out of you. I always had to sack the instant I came home. I ought to be dead tired right now, what with all the work I've been putting in at June S. But I'm so impatient that I'm really more annoyed than anything else right now. I stare at the clock, and stare, and stare. Damn it, move you stupid minute hand! My cell phone rings again. It's Yukiko this time. Yukiko Amagi, another member of the investigation team and best friends with Chie. Her perfect poise makes her the center of every guy's attention, but she's definitely not what I would consider ladylike. How can I put it? She's the biggest airhead I know. I mean, if she's what every dude in Japan wants, I think we're all in for some trouble. Ignorance is bliss, and to judge by all the guys who are after her based on just her image, I really think that's true. But, you know, I also think that the Yukio I know now is better than the misplaced ideal. Because her family runs an old, high-class hotel, she has pressures that other people can only imagine, but deep down, she's just a normal girl with real feelings. Like, I really know what I'm talking about. If Yukio heard me saying this, she'd kill me. Probably by making me eat her cooking. Her curry tastes like something they'd have to pass a law to prevent people from ever discovering again. Um, Yosuke-kun? Good evening, this is Yukiko. I got an email from Chie a moment ago. Yeah, she told me to. About the Midnight Channel coming back, right? Sheesh. <laughs> Bet Chie was half asleep when she emailed you. <laughs> I could tell she was worried, so I tried making a joke. Come to think of it, Yukiko never really calls me like this. She must really be worried. I waited for her to reply, and what she had to say next took me by surprise. I received a phone call saying that Risei-chan disappeared. Oh, I mean, not literally, but it seems they can't get in contact with her. Really? Risei is another part of the investigation team. She's our junior at Yasugami High. Her full name is Risei Kujikawa. Yeah, you recognize the name, right? The famous pop idol Risei Kujikawa, aka Risette? Last year, she announced she was taking a break and came here to Inaba to live with her grandmother. But she started working again this year, so she's been going in and out of the city with all the stuff she's doing. From what Yukiko just told me, her manager couldn't get a hold of her all day and tried looking up the Amaki Inn to ask Yukiko if she had any ideas. She didn't mention any problems she was having to you, right? No, I think she would have told us if anything was troubling her. She was busy, but happy to be working. Right. And now rumors of the Midnight Channel coming back. Yeah. Yukiko's voice is gloomy. Listening to this is making me restless, too. But if you're depressed, you start thinking about more bad things. Going down that road is going to get her. What would you do? Shoot, this is the millionth time I've thought that today. Anyway, I try to cheer up Yukiko. Well, let's not get carried away. First, we need to see if the Midnight Channel's really back. There's no use worrying over things we don't know are happening. It's always important to be sure first, right? Hmm. You're right. Thank you, Yosuke-kun. I hear the relief in Yukiko's voice when she hangs up and let out a sigh. A big sigh that could never have let Yukio hear in her state. Teddy's nowhere to be found. Kanji's vanished too. 
and to top it off, no one can get a hold of Rise. And for that midnight channel we're going to start up again at the exact same time? This is way too much to be a coincidence. Out of habit, I start going through the contacts of my phone when I reach the name Yuna or Tommy. I hesitate. He's not even here yet. I'll only make him worry. As leader of our investigation team, you had the biggest part in it all. But he's done with all that now, living a normal life back in the city. He's coming back to enjoy our reunion. I don't want to make him worry. If anything, I should call him after I know something. I open the current and look outside. Like Chie said, it was raining. All the conditions for the Midnight Channel to show up have been met. If it's going to, or if it's going to, that is. I mean, I'm still not good at reading. I you figure I'd be good at it now, but I'm not. No, can't happen. It's over. I said it out loud, but in my heart, I'm dreading that it'll show. It was like I was almost looking forward to it. It's almost midnight. Rivals. They are friends, yet powerful foes. The desperate fighting program amongst high school students. A new legend is about to start. of all men! Come on down! Nobody touches his precious Nanako, the sister complex kingpin of steel, Yu Narukami! It's only natural. Wage slave in the boonies by day, hero by night, Captain Rasantamo, Yosuke Hanamura! Everything that bores me has got to go! A spunky dragon with deadly legs, the carnivore who's discarded womanhood, Chie Satunaka! You need to eat more meat! Please escort me to the ring, my prince! The unconquerable Snow Black, Yukiko Amagi! I'll finish you in one strike! Blooming roses and bulging muscles! The blood-curdling beefcake emperor, Kanji Tatsumi! Deep into realms of romance! The body of a child, the brain of a genius! The 2000 IQ killjoy detective, Naoto Shirogane! Is this an army of idiots? Fight! and survive towards the one throne waiting at the end. The P1 Grand Prix where fierce fights will be fought. The battle begins tonight. Seeing yourself on TV is really shocking. Am I really that goofy looking? No, that's not it. Why'd they call me Captain Rasantimon? Rasantimon. I know that word from King Moron's class. What was it again? Something about the weak hating the strong? Some kind of jealousy? Now why the hell would I get a lame name like that? Just the sound of it makes me mad. Rasantimon. This is too much. This is way too much. <sighs> now I know why Yukiko and Kanji hated the Midnight Channel so much. Well, I thought I knew all about what happened last year, but this time I'm actually experiencing it. See, everyone who ended up as part of the investigation team was on the Midnight Channel at one point. And the Midnight Channel doesn't just show any old you. It shows the weakest part of you, the part of you you don't want to come out, but made super size. In other words, fake footage of you, so humiliating that you want to crawl under a rock and die, is broadcast all over town. And you and I managed to not have that happen to us. So I guess I never really knew how bad it felt. Up until tonight, that is. Ah, uh, did everyone in town see this? And it's going to show up again every night it rains? Damn it, how did they manage to go on without skipping town is beyond me. Seriously, I gotta give him mad props for sticking it out. But, uh, now's not the time for that. Was that Teddy in that weird costume? He was acting like the host. Does that mean he's the one broadcasting the Midnight Channel this, this time? Could mean that Kanji and Rise are involved too? Ah, what's going on? Ah oh, crap, why was you on there too? And why now? What am I gonna tell him? He comes back for the holidays and everyone's gonna be like, Oh look, it's a sister complex kingpin. That's messed up. Should I tell him not to come? Oh, wait, what can I tell him at all? Knowing me, I'll accidentally call him that myself. Oh no, I know I'll at least see Yeah, I know I'll at least say he has a sister complex, so I won't be able to help myself. Shit! <laughs> As I wrestle with confusion, the sudden sound scares the living crap on me and I panic for a second. Get it together, Yosuke. You're a third year. Who could be calling me now? Aw, oh, hell no. Of all people, it had to be you. Uh, uh. What 
should I do? Tell him? Don't tell him? I reflexively hit the answer button before I figured out what to say. Uh, hello, this is Yosuke. Yosuke? He's suspicious of me. Like, really suspicious. I nervously passed the phone from one hand to the other several times. It's nothing. I just freaked out when you called all of a sudden. Yeah, that's it. What's up? Hey, when do you want to meet? That's not why I was calling. I know how I sounded, but Yu's voice was calm. Wait, is he laughing at me? I saw the Midnight Channel. You saw it too, right? Huh? My mind went blank. How would he see it? Isn't it only a local thing? Don't tell me it's a nationwide broadcast now. Did Teddy not tell you? Since we're meeting up early tomorrow, I decided to come today. Maybe he sensed how bewildered I was, since he explained everything so calmly. I see. So Teddy has appeared before he could tell me you was coming today. I'm still trying to piece things together as you continues. I figured you wouldn't think I could have seen it, so I gave you a call. Uh, well, I assumed you weren't here yet, so I didn't want to rely on you. <laughs> you haven't changed. Oh, I can tell he's a little angry now. I can just see him shaking his head. I bet he can tell why I'm acting so nervous right now. Damn, this is embarrassing. So how about it? You're not gonna leave this be, are you, Captain Rasantama? Why'd you zero in on that part? Did you see how they called you a sister complex kingpin? <laughs> Mine's not that bad. You think? <laughs> Jeez, he's so forgiving. That's just like him. Man, I really feel like an ass now. Oh, I ought to tell you, that program's not the only strange thing lately. Teddy, Rise, and Kanji aren't here either. They disappeared. When I put it all into words like this, this sounds a lot worse than, than it was when I was thinking about it. I can hear a hint of tension in Yu's voice. Alright, we should get together tomorrow like we planned. Yeah, at the Jeunesse Food Court. Welcome back, partner. It's good to be here. Talking with Yu takes me back. Calling him partner was kind of sappy, I guess, but he takes it in stride. I suddenly feel a lot less confused now. He's something. Decisiveness, confidence, he's got strength that I don't. My wandering eyes happen to stop on my desk drawer. My career choice application is in there, well past its due date. Oh, right. Sorry to say, I forgot to pick up your souvenir. A souvenir? Don't even worry about it, man. You sure? I thought you were really looking forward to it. Those nurses. Nurses? I have a bad feeling about this. Warning bells go off in my head before I can figure out what's going on. You had sounded so calm because he was trying to hold back laughter all this time. Yeah, Teddy asked me to get it for you. He said you were crushed that they got burned. Oh, wait, this is all... I didn't know you were into nurses. Ah, ah, shut up! That's enough! Damn it, you're trying to wind me up, aren't you? Stay home, you jerk. But I'm already here. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. I hang up, barely resisting the urge to throw the phone across the room. <laughs> okay, don't panic. I need to call Chie and tell her about the plan. How am I supposed to look everyone in the face tomorrow? As if it was, if it was reading my mind, my phone goes off again. Lo and behold, it's Chie calling. Uh, anyone can see what's coming next. Hello? What the hell was that carnivore who's discarded womanhood crap? And Chie's raging at the top of her lungs. Ow, you almost blew out my eardrum. I haven't discarded it. I haven't, you hear me? I let her blow off steam for a bit. Once in a while, I have to check to make sure that I haven't accidentally turned on the speakerphone. She's that loud. I mean, I know the feeling, but can you please calm down? One, okay, well, uh, once Shia gets tired of complaining and hangs up, my fears and exhaustion are blown away. <laughs> Mine are just escalating because I just can't fucking read, man. I don't know what's going on yet, but I'm going to find out. Then I'll crush whoever's behind this. Juness is crowded as hell thanks to Golden Week. I see some employees whispering to each other and looking at me, but I pretend not to notice. I run into you before everyone else. Thankfully, he doesn't bring up the nurse thing again, instead talking about the welcoming party he had with Nanako. Maybe there's a little truth to that sister complex line, eh? As we step into the food court, Chie and Yukiko were both sitting in their usual spots. Good to see you guys again. Welcome back! We missed you! The guest of honor is finally here! You're looking well. Welcome back. Um, should we... Huh? Oh, he already knows about the Midnight Channel thing. He's actually the one who called me up about it. Oh, hasty. This has turned into a pretty thrown-together reunion, hasn't it? But I'm glad you came. Both of them sound happy. Neither of them show this I'm totally count on you attitude toward me. What's up with that? Hey Yosuke, why the long face? Shut up! 
It's a man thing. Just gotta deal with it. Oh, is it about your guidance counseling paper? The teacher asked me to tell you that you need to hurry and turn yours in. Huh? You haven't turned that in yet? <laughs> Yikes. Shut up, shut up! That's not it. <clears throat> Seeing you take a seat, I clear my throat to grab their attention. All right, let's start this. Well, it sucks that we can't hang out more before jumping into another mystery, but to celebrate our partner's return, I hereby reinstate the investigation team in response to the Midnight Channel going back on the air last night. Oh, the team is back! Just hearing that name again gets me all fired up. Yeah, let's do this! Uh, I don't think the applause is necessary. I mean, it's pretty exciting, but the reason we're reforming the team is because there's another case to solve. I look to you for some support, but he's clapping along with the rest of them. Et tu, Narakami? <laughs> anyway, seeing them all open up open to the idea takes some tension out of the situation. Well, let's get cracking. I mean, this is no laughing matter. No one's heard from Teddy, Kanji, or Rise. Just those three, right? Yeah. Oh, I got a hold of Naotokun, but I didn't tell her about this stuff. She told me she couldn't make it today because of her job, so I didn't want to worry her. She seemed pretty bummed that she couldn't be here, too. Naoto is another investigation team member. Is this the last one you have to talk about? <laughs> she was the last to join, and she's the one year below us in school. Even though she's a student, she's also a detective, and the cops rely on her for tough cases. Naoto helped out a lot during last year's incident. She's incredibly skilled, but that also makes her really busy. Even after the events of last year, she's been running around. She tried to get an opening in her schedule for today, but I guess it didn't work out. Um, one thing's been bothering me. The picture on the TV was very clear last night. Yeah, going by the pattern from last year, it wouldn't be that clear until after the victim entered the TV. Hey, isn't this the first time a big group of people was shown together? Plus, we're still here. Why us anyway? And what's up with those insulting descriptions? Both Chie and Yukiko are crying, lies and slander. Now those catchphrases they got were pretty on the mark if you ask me. Wow. Of course, I never say that to their faces. Hell no. I do value my life, you know. What bothers me most is Teddy. He was acting like the host of that show. Yeah, we can't find him. This smells fishy. Then again, I doubt he would play a prank like this for no reason. I agree there. We don't have much choice but to ask Teddy why he's doing this. Which means... I guess we'll just have to go inside the TV and find out what's going on. Won't we be stuck in there without Teddy to give us an exit? Uh-huh, not so. I've had Teddy keep the exit TV out on that side. Look at you, all prepared! I mean, think about it. What if we were half asleep and fell into a TV when Teddy wasn't over there? Isn't that a scary thought? Like anyone would be that clumsy. Anyway, it sounds like it's safe for us to go investigate then. Yeah, there's no doubt that something's going on in there. The host, Teddy, has disappeared, but he isn't the only one missing. Kanji was listed as one of the participants, and Rise wasn't even mentioned. We're just going to have to jump in the TV and investigate. Yu gives the order. Is everyone ready? We're all good to go. To tell the truth, I had a hunch that this was going to happen. I already lugged out all my weapons and junk today with the intention of doing this. It'll be my first time in a while going into the TV world. And the first time in a while isn't anything out of the ordinary at all. This is serious business, but I can't help but get excited about this, you know what I mean? The days when we ran around town as the investigation team? I mean, it wasn't all fun and games, there were plenty of hardships and sad times. But I learned a lot of important stuff because of them. It changed me. I never felt so fulfilled in my life. So it makes me wonder, what about this time? Is something like that waiting for me? Something... Something that's going to change me. Man, what am I thinking? I shake my head and focus on the task at hand. We don't know what lurks inside the TV. Negligence can mean death. I leave the food court with the rest of the investigation team. It's a holiday, so the store's full of people. Huh. I feel like things are picking up around town. You know, it's been a while since last time. I'm a little nervous. Oh, wait! They're 
are still people in this aisle. Hey, get ready. Uh -huh. The customers are going Thanks. away. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's go! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Isn't this different from usual? Oh no! What do we do? What can we do? We can't stop now! I can hear a lot of people talking from far away. Where am I? I'm at a desk? I raise my head slowly to find myself at the same, my same old desk with the setting sun filling the room. Man, my mind isn't thinking straight. Wait, what was I doing? Shoot, did I doze off? <sighs> I should hurry home and get to work. What the? All of a sudden, the sound of cheering echoes from outside. The students in the classroom all join in the cheering and rush out the door. The hell? Seriously, what's going on? I run to the window and look down into the schoolyard. The area in front of the school gate is swarming with students. What's going on? I look around, but there isn't anyone left in the, in the room to ask. I don't want to go be a rubbernecker just because everybody else is. But I have to find out what's going on. After some internal debating, I decide to take a look. There's a giant crowd at the school gate. The gate itself has some funky decorations and a big ass sign. He won Grand Prix? I've seen those words somewhere before. But where was it? Where did I see it? My mind's all hazy, I can't think. Whoa, now what? Do you think it's funny causing a commotion like this at school? I better see everyone involved in this heading home right now! I turn around to look at where the, that whistle came from and see a female student standing there holding a megaphone. She has a long ponytail and strong-willed eyes. Damn, she's really hot. When did a girl like this end up in our school? How did I not know about this until now? She really stands out, but I don't think I've ever seen her before. Where did they get this huge set? Some people are always up to shenanigans. I can almost see the anger baking off of her. She definitely has a lot of spirit. And yet, none of the other students has so much turned around. She gets ready to blow her whistle again, when her eyes meet. Uh, hello? Oh, it's you! The Grand Prix contestant, yosuke -kun. I mean, Captain Ressentiment. Oh, right! I remember now. That P1 Grand Prix that showed up on the Midnight Channel. Use the Sister Complex Kingpin and Chie is the Carnivore. And I'm Captain Ressentiment. What a fantastic nickname. <laughs> I should go kill myself. Uh, who the hell came up with this crap? What the heck is the P1 Grand Prix anyways? Don't tell me it's being held at school. You're fussing up to being part of it, huh? Well, listen up. You better cut this crap out quick. The student council didn't approve this. Huh? The student council? Come on. Don't tell me you don't remember who your student council president is. Student council president? With a prominent position like that, there's no way I wouldn't remember her. Is that Risei? She's here at school? They're even using the school PA system! How many times do I gotta repeat myself? This is your last warning! Stop this at once! Oh no, it's Miss Sourpuss! She's trying to stop our fun! Everyone, get her out of here! After Risei gives the order, all those students turn around to look, and then they rush straight at us. Jeez, not a single one of them gave a damn about their present up until now. Huh? Hey, you're kidding, right? Dude, reset, do something about this! What are they trying to do to us? I'm not gonna start anything crazy here. But this probably isn't the time to start taking things easy, either. At the very least, I should get this girl to safety. Uh, I turn toward her. Surprisingly, she's standing her ground in the face of all the students. She's defiantly staring back at them. I warned you all. Miss President tosses her megaphone aside and lightly taps one of the charging students, and he slams to the ground as if a truck had hit him. The other students soon meet the same fate. It's said like they didn't expect her to do anything. Before I know it, the student council president is the only one left standing. That's amazing. So much for that. Then how about this? 
When Ryusuke speaks, the monitor above the girl's head starts swinging back and forth. You're joking, right? My body moves out of instinct. Ah! What are you- I anger her aside and shove her behind me to protect her. I look up, and the giant monitor is right in front of my face. Oh, shit. Am I dead? What was that you did? I slid open my eyes to see someone I know very well standing before us. The other me, my persona, Jiraiya. The monitor was cut right in half, the two pieces lying on either side of us. I was able to summon my persona. Huh, wait, isn't this Yasagami High? You can only summon personas inside the- Hey, that's right, oh yeah! I finally remember everything! I jumped inside the TV with you and the others. But wait. Then, who is this girl? What the heck is our school doing inside the TV world? I'm sitting there confused when Risei's voice chimes in from the PA system. You should have just died. What? You aren't worth anyone's effort. You just get in the way and cause trouble for people around you. Risei? That was definitely Risei's voice. So I guess she's inside the TV too. But I never expect her to say anything that cruel. What's going on here? I won't let you destroy the school. You're in the announcement room, huh? Well, wait there! I'm coming for you! Uh, hey, what are you going to do? The student council president starts running towards the school building. And then she turns around and waves. Thanks for saving me back there! After all that glaring, this is the first time I've seen her smile. Wow, she's cute. After that, she runs off again like the wind. And she thanked me, too. So I've gotten an end. No, Mad Yosuke, this is not the time to get... This is not the time to start horny posting, boy, okay? Wait up! It's too dangerous to go alone. It was really impressive the way she was tossing those people left and right, but it's too dangerous to run around here without a persona. Besides, a world like this in the TV means... But as I try to chase after her, the PA cuts into my train of thought. Sorry about that mishap! The first round's challenger is already here! The watching students are all looking this way. Wait, does she mean that this challenger is... Huh? Me? But first, the general has a few words for you all. <sighs> and here my mind, it turns on. Teddy's on it. This day has finally come! I'm proud to announce the opening of our very own P1 Grand Prix! Teddy, you bastard! What are you doing? You disappeared and we... Bring out his opponent! Hey, listen to me! Smoke shoots out enveloping everything. Wait, someone's stepping out of it. You're all ready for this! Chie? Oh, it's Yost. Gotta let down. Geez, sorry it's only me. Hey, what's going on here? Risa and Teddy both seem, uh... Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> she is acting weird. Uh, okay, she's always weird, but this is weird even by Chie standards. Her eyes are glittering and she's... What the hell? Why is she looking at her lips while she's staring at me? Hey, Yosuke, can I eat you? Huh? Sure. <laughs> Wait, what? Would it be better to batten you up first? I'm not a fan of stringy cuts. What are you talking about? You. What are you saying? I, I mean, seriously. Wait a second. Maybe she doesn't figure speech is for something more intimate. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's no way she'd have the guts to say that right in front of everyone. As I panic, Chie starts her kung fu pose and makes a forceful declaration. You want to hear the reason I eat meat? Because it's there! So that is what you mean. Then why are you saying that like you're quoting someone? Yes, Ken. Don't worry. It'll be painless. No, nah. -uh. There's no way it won't hurt. You'll continue to live inside me forever. Look, I draw the line at vor. Chie, look, you, you know how you know my feelings for you, but I draw the line at vor. Everybody, if you don't draw the line at vor, where are you drawing your line? Yeah, in your stomach. Thanks for the food. She summoned her persona? Is she serious? Like, is she seriously going to nom down on the Yosuke filet? <laughs> what the hell? She has 
gone bye-bye. Damn it, I gotta fight. I need to fight for my life. There's no way it would be your three-course meal. Oh boy, so we're like 40 minutes in and we're finally getting our first fight. This is only scene two, man. This is going to be a long one. Anyways, I finally get to play as Yosuke. I really like playing as Yosuke in this game. He's fast, and his square combo is does good damage. But we're, we're going to try to get that uh, all you can eat the Fey out of here with the, the final smash. Like, that B-slash is so good. I just love it. I, like, when we get to Ultimax, if it gives me a chance to play as Yosuke, I'm probably just going to take a chance to play as Yosuke. You know what I'm saying? I love it. I love it so much. Okay. You literally just, like, sidestep through it. I hate you, Chie. First you're talking all this weird vor shit, and now you're skipping my moves. Not really the plan I had in mind today, but, well, it happens, so I have to live with it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Get fucked. Whoa, that was sick. Oh, the air grab! Let's go! Look at that advanced tech. There was the poison in there, too. <sighs> I beat her. What the hell is up with her? Not even Shadow Chie was that cracked up. What's the matter with Chie? Does she go bonkers when her state gauge with Azula or something? She groans and stirs from the ground. Oh, she's waking up. I hope she's not gonna start talking about eating me again. Yeah, me too. I, I hope you've learned your lesson and never even think about attacking your friends again. I couldn't put some distance between us and yell from a ways away. I think my voice sh uh, shook a little, but can you blame me? I was really scared. First you insult me, then you kick my ass. Ooh, you moron. Insult you? Uh, what did I say? All I remember about what we said before the fight was her eyes, cold and sinister like a tiger stalking her prey. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. You went on and on about how I'm a coward and a brat! When did I have time to say anything like that? You were about to eat me! What? Eat you? That had better not be a crude innuendo for anything. I meant it exactly how it sounded. I was scared to death of you, stupid Chie. What? Oh, you're stupid for calling me stupid, stupid Yosuke! See, that's something a brat would say. There you go again! You're the brat for calling me that! The monitor turns on. Teddy looks annoyed. Hey, we're the ones who, sh who should be annoyed with you. We're done. Jeez, what's up with this? Come on, head over to the school building. Your next opponent's waiting. I'm not doing this anymore. You're obviously fine, so I'm going home. But you can't. Lost, so she can't even move from that spot! Huh? Ow! There's something here! Chie ignores Teddy and starts walking away, but then suddenly sits down and clutches her head. Huh? No one gets to leave until the tournament's over. Only the one who fights to the bitter end and is crowned victor can earn freedom! Good luck! The camera randomly zooms in on Teddy giving a thumbs up, and then the monitor turns off. Damn that, Teddy. You have to actually do stuff before you start with the fancy camera work. Stuff like, oh, I don't know, explain what the hell's going on here? While I'm staring at the monitor, I can hear Chie yelling in the background. What's she doing? Yeah! Chie's doing jump kicks, but every time she does, she stops midair before she lands. What the? Now that's a neat trick. Is it like pulling punches but in midair? Whatever it is, she's pretty good at it. She notices that I'm staring at her and turns towards me. There really is a wall. A wall? I try walking through the spot where Chie keeps getting stuck. Nothing. Chie looks surprised and tries to follow me, but... <laughs> wow, it looks like she really can't pass through. Is this what Teddy was talking about? Only the victor can go on or something? Since when could he do fancy stuff like this? And he said that nobody gets to leave until this tournament's over, huh? So we don't have a choice but to go along with this? Well, uh, guess I'll be going then. There were four of us who came in here, so at most I need to fight two more battles, right? Oh, if only, Yosuke. Are you gonna fight Yukiko and Yukin then? Of 
course not. The only reason I fought you just now is because you attacked me first. If there has to be a winner and loser, I'll just forfeit as soon as the battle starts. If I find Teddy along the way, I'll deal with him too. Oh, good idea. In that case, don't be so harsh on your next opponent before the match, okay? You're the one who was doing that. I hope you don't start eating things off the floor when you get hungry. Why would I do that? I'll be waiting, so be careful. Chie's sudden meekness surprised me. She sees my shock and turns away. Uh, she feels helpless. It's like the one time you and I left her behind while we went to the TV. There was no guarantee that we'd make it back, but she still waited for us. When we finally returned, she was so relieved she started crying. The same thing's happening here. Yeah. I pinch her nose. You've got a really small nose, you know that? <laughs> Just get out of here already! Chie boots me in the ass and I head over to the school building. She doesn't, she doesn't know how I handle being teased by a guy. Still, with a look on her face, there was nothing else I could do. I'll hurry up and finish this Grand Prix. I pick up my pace, but I notice something. There are students peeking out of all the windows at me. No, they're not students. I take a closer look at them. They're something else taking the shape of students. I guess they pop into their true forms while we were fighting for some reason. They're like silhouettes. Are they shadows? But they don't really look like monsters. I don't feel like they're actually hostile. I mean, they're not particularly doing anything either, they're just standing there. Are they just extras Teddy made for this, for this drama of his? If they're not any danger, then I guess I don't really have to figure them out. Still, threat or not, they're pretty damn creepy. And if there are things like shadows around here... This is definitely inside the TV. What's going on? Why is it a school? Damn it, I don't get this at all! I have doubts, but I keep on running. I take a look around the halls as I enter the building. Yep, there it is. There's a monitor in front of the stairway that I don't remember being there before. This must be where the second round is going to be. I raise my voice. All right, is this the place? Bring out the next challenger. As if in response, the monitor turns on and Teddy's stupid costume fades in. Hey, that's my line. Jeez, stop throwing me off like that. You don't stop this prank soon. I'm going to make your next shift a living hell. Usually, I feel like that would have Teddy begging for mercy. But he just hums a little tune as if nothing's the matter. What's with him? Not just Teddy, Rize is helping him out too. Wait. This might be a surprise for you? Sensei is coming back, so I thought about this cool surprise party. Sorry, but I forgot to tell you. That sounds like him. That sounds so like him. After we solved the case last year, the TV world turned into a safe place, so... I guess I could see that. But would Teddy really make us fight? Bring out the next challenger! The smoke starts whooshing out again. Four of us jump to the TV at Juness, so I'm betting it'll be you or Yukiko this time. But if this is the prize party for you, then it should be... Yosuke-kun! Alright! Hey Yukiko, I want to ask you something. Is this some kind of surprise party? You guys didn't tell me anything about... As I was... As I was walk toward Yukiko, she suddenly holds up her fan. What's that stench? <laughs> huh? I thought there was a wet dog here. Huh? Does she mean me? I take a couple of whiffs in my shirt, but I can't notice anything odd. Did I get all sweaty from that fight with Chie? Still, leaning to mark to my face that I stink really hurts. And to compare it to a wet dog? S sorry. Um, so, Yukiko san, did you run into Teddy or Rise? They're calling this a Grand Prix and making us fight to see who the winner is. Apparently, we can't leave until. You're talking too much. I have about as much interest in what you're saying as I do in plankton. Plankton? But you can't even see those without a microscope. Yukiko is acting strange. Even stranger than Chie. Well, not crazy strange. She acts more like Yukiko than ever, but she'd never come out and say something that mean. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. Yukiko, this isn't a welcome back surprise for you, is it? Hmm? No, it's a Grand Prix for you, Yosuke-kun. And given what a goddamn pain in the ass it's been so far, I can't wait till it's over. Dude, what's with the language? Have even you gone nuts? What the hell, man? 
Wow, this is the exact opposite of how she normally acts. She really is a snow black. Wait, so if that's what the commercial called her, and the way Chie was acting... Oh, so that's why hers was carnivore. That makes sense now. Those nicknames have some truth to them then. But why? Because Teddy told them to act that way? They're not all crazy, are they? But the Grand Prix for me? What's that supposed to mean? Hm. Now you're ignoring me? Ugh. Even if this is all an act, it's still soul crushing. Hey, listen. We can't leave here until the Grand Prix ends. So let's just half-ass this. If you don't mind going on to the next round, I'll forfeit without attacking you. Oh, though if we did it that way, you'd have to fight again. It'd be faster if I won and got my hands on Teddy. I'd hate to make Yukiko go on ahead and have to fight even more of us. That's probably not such a good idea. Hey, Yukiko. Will you lose this round for me? Even though you've lost in the battle of life? <laughs> Yikes, this snow black is really bad for my fragile ego. Yukiko suddenly opens her fan in one fluid motion. She smiles faintly, but her eyes aren't smiling. Wait, she's pissed at me? So what? Now snow black can't take being called snow black? Why is my fan so large? Why, my dear? The better to shut up that filthy mouth of yours. That's the wrong fairy tale. Oh, fine. I'll end this as quick as I can, so bear with me for a bit. Things are starting to heat up! Let's get this battle started! Dang it, Risei, quit goading her on. Yukiko is being nasty in a different way from the carnivore, but I've got to take her on. Damn it, looks like I really have to overcome the Amagi challenge if I want to get out of here. Badoop boop. Finally! Well. If it isn't uh, Yosuke getting his comeuppance, or maybe his just deserves, from how he acts in, in uh, Persona 4 sometimes, even if it isn't real, you know, he's just getting a little shit on, and sometimes he deserves it. Uh, anyways. <laughs> I, I I don't remember this one being as long as it's apparently going to be. We're at, uh, well, this is scene 4, and we're fighting against Yukiko, and there's 20 scenes. <laughs> and we're like almost at an hour, man. I, I wanted to play a little bit more Xenoblade tonight, but after recording this and, like, eating food and editing, I don't think I'm going to. Okay. Chie came to her senses when I beat her. So what about Yukiko? I'm still scared out of my wits, but I try to talk to her. Yukiko? Are you alright? Oh, thank goodness. You've gone back to your usual self, Yosuke-kun. What? Oh, are you back to normal too? <laughs> but you just seemed so eager to fight no matter how I tried to stop you. You said things like, I was taking the easy way out. I was sure that you just weren't in your right mind. You noticed that Tere and Risei-chan are acting strange too, right? I think maybe they're under the enemy's control. That doesn't sound good. Crap, so this isn't an act? They're being mind controlled or something? That explains a lot, actually. Damn it, some surprise party. Still, Teddy's controlling people? Or is Teddy being controlled by somebody else? Control? Who could make them act that weird? No ordinary person could pull that off. And why would they do it to start a stupid tournament like this? I think back to what Yu-Gi-Oh said before we fought. It's a Grand Prix for you, Yosuke-kun. For me? Like hell it is. I'm not getting anything out of this. I'm not enjoying it. I... I'm not. In any case, I'm gonna go put an end to this Grand Prix. If it's just us four, there's only one more battle to go. Yu-Gi-Oh didn't know what was going on either, so I explained what I found out. Only the winner can move on. And nobody can leave until there's a champion. And that's, uh, and that since I fought Chie and Yukiko, my next fight should be with you, and that would be the end of it. Oh, and one more thing. There was a student council president. She wasn't in, uh, she wasn't in an intro movie that aired on the Midnight Channel, and she acts like she's against this whole thing, so I don't think I'll end up having to fight her. But she doesn't know about personas, so I can't just let her run around loose. Oh, do you mean the girl with the ponytail? You met her? Mm-hmm. When I talked to her, she said she was going to the announcement room. I 
tried to stop her, but an invisible wall blocked my path. Oh yeah, that's right. She said she was going to the announcement room to stop Rise. Uh, that's not good. If Rise's being controlled by someone behind all of this... That girl's in danger. Really? Sorry, I gotta go. I'll end this as fast as I can and come back for you. Oh, okay. Be careful. And try to help out that girl. I'm sure you can do it, Yosuke-kun. Got it! Yuko's clear, strong voice gives him that extra push. This tournament might look stupid, but if there's some third party behind this, it may be more serious than I'd first thought. Anyway, to the announcement room. Feats don't fail me now! Damn it! <laughs> it's supposed to be pretty easy to get to the announcement room, but thanks to all these stupid invisible walls, I have to take the scenic route. I finally managed to make it to the second floor. If I keep going straight, I'll get to the, st the stairs and then I'll be right there. Ah, Miss President! I found her. I can see her running up ahead, her long ponytail trailing out behind her. But there was another shape next to her, a round familiar one. Over here, over here! Teddy! Damn it, was I too late? I tried to catch up, but I ended up slamming into an invisible wall and falling to the ground. Miss President, are you okay? Let go of his hand! That bear's not in his right mind! I shout out, hoping that I can at least get my voice to reach her, but the two of them disappear through the emergency exit at the end of the hall. I knew it. She might be strong, but Miss President isn't a match for her persona Tony and Teddy. She has to have been captured. He's definitely being controlled. Teddy's not the type to kidnap a girl like that. Uh, I think. I mean, he wouldn't do anything that if she didn't want him to do. He wouldn't do anything if she didn't want him to, at least. I don't know. How many times did Teddy do some weird shit in Persona 4? Ugh. Where is he taking her? Is he up to something? Then it dawns on me. Huh? If that girl doesn't have a persona, how did she get in the TV world? In order to get into a TV, you have to either have the power to use personas, or get someone who does to help you. And by help, I mean that person could force you, too. That's actually what was happening in the series of murders last year. Are we still summarizing? Horrible thoughts start to race through my mind. Is that what's going on with Miss President? Is she just another victim? Victim. That word brings to mind someone else. Saki-senpai. I lost someone that I liked in those murders. I couldn't save her, and she died. If Miss President was also forced into this world like Saki-senpai, then... Damn it, I'll save her. Teddy went through the emergency exit. If he went up the stairs, then the announcement room should be right there. As if my growing desperation wasn't enough, the student invisible wall only makes things worse. I managed to calm my racing heart and begin running to make my way to the announcement room. While avoiding the walls, the next spot I managed to make it to was the music room. Damn it, I'm gonna go up, not down. There was a familiar monitor hanging from the ceiling. So this is where the next fight's gonna be, huh? Hello! Looks like you're on a roll! Teddy! What did you do with Miss President? Oh, how nice of you to worry about someone else! Put your guard down in this battle! Come on! Bring out the next challenger! Smoke begins blowing out as Teddy makes his announcement. A silhouette appears. I can tell who it is already. There's no way I can mistake that shape. Besides, by process of elimination, there's only one more person it could be. Not a go! <laughs> Whoa, that's the first thing he has to say? Ah, uh, I knew it would be you. And Sister Complex Kingpin, just like the others. Yep, good old you, my partner. And his embarrassing nickname. Then again, Nanako-chan always was precious to you, so... Yosuke, it's true that this is a battle you have long desired. But I have something I want to say first. A battle I long desired? I thought that there would be no reason for us to fight. Until now! Huh? How dare you, calling your Nanako-chan in that intimate way! <gasps> yes, sir! I'm sorry, sir! He looks ready to kill me. I, I bow as deep as I can just so I don't have to see his bloodshot eyes. Oh god, it's horrible. If only I had a camera so I could show him this later. I'm forgetting Nanako-san for the moment. 
It seems like there's someone here besides us. She can't use a persona, so I thought maybe she was dropped in here. Uh, you? Yu's eyes turn dead, and he raises his sword. Why would you forget Nanako? That's ridiculous! <laughs> I mean, come on, Nanako-chan... Son really likes you, no matter what. She's always telling me how you're such a nice big brother and how you're so cool. I just want him to calm down so we can talk. Maybe if I avoid talking about Nanako, I can see this conversation in some other direction. Yosuke, enough. You always talk to Nanako? Why? Where? What do you mean by always? What was the precise date and time when you spoke to her? <laughs> the crap was lying, I'm sorry. What? You were lying? Are you saying that Nanako doesn't like me? That she doesn't think I'm nice or cool at all? Why are you so hung up on that? For heaven's sake, I'm getting really sick of this crap. So let's just fight. We'll get this over with, okay? And then we can both calm down and talk like rational people. I'm not gonna hold back at all. I know you can take it. Anyway, here goes! If he's not gonna listen, then I've got no choice. I'll get him to fight me and bring him back to his senses. It's a better use of my time than trying to talk, talk him down anyway. <clears throat> Sorry, Nanako-chan. <laughs> that Nanako-chan! What a dummy, right? That's it! Your life is forfeit! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, just as planned. I'll fix you up, partner. But damn, his eyes are scary. That was one of the scenes I was looking forward to starting this Let's Play, because I just find that shit so funny. Like, I, like when everyone else fights fights you, it's always just, you know, him, him, you know, doing the whole, like, ah, you suck, you are taking the easy way out, you can't do anything by yourself, blah, blah, blah. But just for some reason with Yosuke, it's, it's, it's just his nickname to a, to a T. <laughs> Owie. All right, come on, you. Go into the whirlwind. Oh, bitch. All right, can you stop him with the electricity? That's kind of my weakness here, dog. I mean, I guess I have your weakness as well, but, uh, you know. I can only do so much. Boom. Get him, Jiraiya. Good shit. The battle is over. You looks up. It's his everyday composed face. Looks like he's back to his good old self. Yosuke, are you back to your usual self? That's my line, damn it! Oh wait, that's right. Did I seem strange to you? You know, Yugiko said the same thing. Oh wait, so did Chie. Hmm, something's not right. Carnivore, Chie, Snow Black, Yukiko, Sister Complex Kingpin, Yu. I was wondering who'd be powerful enough to brainwash all three of them into acting all weird. But is that what's really going on? None of them even remember what they said to me before our matches. Hell, they seem to think that I'm the one acting all weird. So maybe it's not the case that they're being controlled. What if I was the one being tricked here? Whoa, then that means I'm the one who needs to wake up. I hurriedly start rubbing my eyes. Maybe I'm still being fooled. I know I'm acting crazy. He opens his mouth to say something. You said that it wasn't your partner, so that was a surprise. I'd ever say that. Yeah. Oh good, he's relieved. It doesn't show on his face, but I can tell. I guess we're okay now. The Yu Narakami I know is the one sitting right in front of me. So I told you about what happened so far. Most importantly, the victim. That is, the student council president that Teddy had kidnapped. I see. And the reason the Midnight Channel seemed so clear was because that girl was already in this world? Oh, you're right. I forgot how that worked. He's right. There are two ways that the Midnight Channel appears. When the subject isn't in the TV world yet, the video is all fuzzy and hard to see. But if it's clear, then that means someone's been thrown inside. Looks like our fears were real. There was a victim already. The question is, who put her in here? I don't know. But whoever came up with this is trying to make us fight each other in the Grand Prix. Maybe they're hoping we'll take each other out since they'd be no match for four Persona users at once. Even as I say it, I start to really believe that's true. Whenever I talk with you, it's like my brain just clicks right into place. No, it's not just the four of us. Kanji and Naoto are probably in this too. You saw them on the video, right? If our enemy is hosting this, they've probably been forced to participate as well. Naoto's was something with an IQ of 2000. It's 
sounds strong. Kanji's was... Um... Beefcake Emperor? No way! I don't want to run into him! <laughs> Could you go on for me? I'm begging you! You've begged me a number of times already. Can't only the winner move on? Damn it, he's ecstatic. Inside his heart, he's celebrating, clenching his fists. I know it. There shouldn't be a problem if you win. Though if you lose against the Beefcake Emperor, you might be in some trouble. No, I don't want to be alone with him. Damn it. Fine, I'll go. This must be what they mean by you have to cover your ass for the worst. You'll be fine. You mean me or my ass? No, I mean about saving that girl. You can definitely do this. It's in your hands now. You. Sorry we're talking about my ass so much. No, hey, wait. I mean, I was just a little shocked to hear that from him. Up until now, he's always been the one leading the pack, followed by me. And now you was the one telling me that he's relying on me to get things done? He's trusting me. <laughs> a sister can't let you know, he's still my friend. Just leave the rest to me, big bro. Uh, I don't think I'm comfortable having you call me that. I'm not saying that you're my big bro, it's just... You were going on and on about Nanako-chan a moment ago, so... Oh, yeah, that wasn't you. I tried to cover my embarrassment by telling a joke, but it didn't seem to help. Uh, now I'm even more embarrassed. Anyway, leave this to me. I'll be going now. I tried to leave on a high note by acting in high spirits, so I waved to you and dashed out of the music room. Every time I think I'm getting close to the announcement room, I hit another wall and have to take a detour. I finally make it to the third floor, though. And there's another wall right next to the door to a classroom. More or less an invitation to go inside, right? And to judge from my past experiences, I'm in for another battle. Who's my next opponent? The Emperor? His Imperial Highness? <laughs> no use dreading it. You have to burn that dread, Yosuke. Ah, we want it. I mean, Yosuke can. I was expecting Kanji, but our student council president and Teddy are waiting for me inside. It looks like I caught up with them. There's a ton of stuff that I need to get straight. I start off by throwing Teddy a single question. Hey Teddy, what do you love most? A passionate battle with one's life at risk, of course! There we have it. Yeah, that's not Teddy. The real one would have said, all the fly honey bears or something. Alright then, let's fight. I'll try not to make it hurt too much, but you gotta go down. Sorry, dude. <laughs> Looks like you're enjoying the Grand Prix, Yosuke, just like I hoped. I held this Grand Prix just for you, after all. I'm glad you like it, Yosuke. People have been saying that from the start, and it doesn't make any sense. It's only in this world that you can be serious about anything. Didn't the idea excite you? Wasn't this the first thing you thought when the Midnight Channel came on? Another problem that'll help me change. That wasn't... I can't let that get to me. Teddy's being controlled. Those are words of whoever's making us fight. But as he continues speaking, it's like he's reading my mind. There is no enemy. You know that, don't you? That case is over and done with. The days where you could be special are all gone. You lost everything, and you've gone back to your boring, mediocre self again. Since you were having a hard time accepting that, I whipped up this Grand Prix. I'm on your side, Yosuke. That's why I'm hosting this for you. There is no enemy. What Teddy said goes along with something else. You said it. Yukio said it. This Grand Prix was for me. Don't tell me. This whole thing is to fulfill my wishes? I mean, I know that Teddy and Risei's personas are special and that they can connect to people's minds and stuff. And Risei can do a lot of other stuff, too. Is it possible for her to make people hear things that nobody's saying when they're talking? And did she use that power to set up this Grand Prix for me? But deep in my heart, did I really want this to happen? That's not true. You were so cool, Yosuke. You were stronger than Chie-chan, or Yuki-chan, or even Sensei. You're almost the champion. Don't worry, I'll let you win this one. You're lying! What's wrong? Both of you were acting weird. I forgot about her for a minute there. Hey, yeah, what about her? She has nothing to do with this. I've never met her up until now. I prepared that girl as a heroine for you. Let's face it, there's no way you'd get fired up enough to win if there wasn't a pretty girl waiting at the end. Prepared? Yosuke-kun? 
What the hell does he mean prepared? She's just a normal girl. No way. Teddy didn't push her in here, did he? He didn't get her caught up in this so that I can win the championship and save the dame, did he? It was way too much for me. I stood there with my mouth gaping wide open, unable to, unable to utter a word. No goddamn way. What the hell? I never asked for any of this. How could I want any of this to happen? That preview on the Midnight Channel was pretty good, huh? It's no surprise since you came up with it. My body suddenly froze. That's right. I felt it when I saw that ad on the TV, didn't I? That it was beginning. That something I've been waiting for, something that would change me, has come again. No, that's not true! I try to clear that thought out of my head by shouting, but now that the suspicion has snuck its way into my mind, I know that it's stuck for good. Do I really hate this crazy situation? Can I honestly say that I'm not enjoying it? No, that's not it. Shut up, you're, you're being controlled! I'll help you come to your senses. All right, there we go. Now we're starting to pull at Yosuke's heartstrings. I just got fucking batted. Yeah, well, guess what, you little bear? I'm fast as fuck, boy. And I'm about to close that distance in an instant. That's why I like playing as Yosuke, because I'm really bad at being a character who gets ranged out. But if Yosuke can literally get across the screen in 0.2 seconds, uh, it doesn't necessarily matter if he does a lot of damage, because I can just get in there. And if I'm playing against normal AI and I like they don't block, like we're fine, right? It's all good. Look at that, I haven't used an actual, like, command move in almost, like, ten episodes or something. Feels weird, man. Teddy? Miss President? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm alright. But what was that all about? Aren't you two friends? I can't bear the look she's giving me. Not confused, but not judging, so I turned away. Did I really want to beat up my friends? I don't want to believe it. First, I need to ask Teddy here what his real intentions are. Whatever I may have secretly wanted, that's no reason to push an innocent girl into the TV world. Heck, did Teddy really do that? I bite my lip and wake Teddy up. Ow! That was so mean, Yosuke! Sorry, Teddy. Let's go back. This Grand Prix's over. What? It's over? It ended while everyone was making fun of me? Making fun of you? What? You were the host! You had on these weird clothes. That wasn't the real me! Yosuke, even you thought that was me? <laughs> we sleep in the same futon every night, yet you couldn't tell a beast like that apart from me! We don't sleep in the same futon! Wait, does that mean it's someone else doing this? I wasn't too sure of him either when I first came across him. I mean, what are the odds there'd be two with someone that crazy looking? I keep telling you! Just by looking at me, I'm much more adorable than that jerk. Check out the fur. Uh, I want to break it to him, but I honestly can't tell the difference. Wait, back up, huh? The Teddy on the monitor is a fake? I calm Teddy down to get him to explain things to me. It seems that the general is some kind of copy of him, and the TV world was already like this when he got here. What the hell? There is no enemy, my ass. Oh, yes, there is. Anyway, the reason he's with Miss President isn't because he captured her, it's because she thought he was the bad guy and was chasing after him. But since, for once she caught up with him, Teddy had begun thinking of himself as a knight in shine armor, so he was going with her to the announcement room. A way to confuse me. I've been doing my best to get myself unframed! You should have seen what a manly knight I was when I defeated Kanji along the way! So Kanji's out of the bracket? Phew. I, I mean, if you're not the host here, then... Set this up for me. You're saying this Grand Prix is for you? Um, about that. Um. I try to figure out some way to explain, but some 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 familiar feeling, like a ringing in my ears, knocks the thoughts away. I mean, not in my ears. It's in my head, but it's not a sound. It's weak at first, but I know it's getting stronger. It's. Yosuke Senpai, is Teddy with you too? Risa. I can hear Risa, but not over the school's PA system. For her to be talking directly into my head like this, she has to be using her persona. And maybe it's just me, but she sounds like she's been crying recently, or is about to soon. I'm so glad. Ever since this weird fake Teddy kidnapped me, I've been all alone. The others are fighting each other too! Oh, oh, I'm here too! And so is Miss President! Miss President? 
Oh, you're right! I do sense one more presence there. Who are you guys talking to? Sorry, I'll explain in a sec. Hey, Risa, are you okay? The one who's been talking over the PA isn't really you, right? Of course not! I'm not that big of a ditz. <laughs> but she's still a ditz, she'll admit that much. I'm in the announcement room now. General Teddy was watching me, but he left, so I'm using this chance to contact you guys. Hey, don't do anything reckless, okay? But I can't just sit here and do nothing! Not while you're all being forced to fight! She sounds all ready for action now, but considering how desperate her voice sounded at the beginning, I know she's just trying to act tough. She must have been scared, all by herself. Well, duh. Unlike us, she didn't know if there was ever going to be anyone else coming to help her. I awkwardly recap what I know for her. This Grand Prix might be related to me. Actually, it might all be my fault. Huh? huh? What? What? What the? I don't know really who or what that fake Teddy is. But if it's doing this for me, a lot of things start to make sense. If Teddy isn't the one managing this tournament, then it makes all the stuff he said before the fight a lie. But lie or not, it did make sense. I mean, even if Teddy isn't the bad guy here, this Grand Prix is being held for my benefit. I mean, that's pretty much settled. <sighs> I think I have a good idea of who, poor, who the poor sucker is. Do you think maybe that fake Teddy didn't leave the room, but actually just disappeared? Huh? Give me a Give second, me a I'll search, I'll for, search him. for him. Rita's transmission stops for a second. If my guess is right, then there's a big chance he's already gone. Come on, let him not be there anymore. Risa came back online. Shadow! That fake Teddy's actually a big shadow! He hasn't disappeared? Wow, the size of this one! I think it might be the shadow of someone who entered the TV. But why is it mimicking Teddy? That's what I can't... Hmm? What's up? Uh, the person next to you, Senpai. Is that Miss President? Something strange about the reading I'm getting off of her. Oh, is it because she's not a Persona user? No, that's not it. I don't know how to describe it. <sighs> Sorry, something's coming. I gotta cut off this chat now. That's fine, just don't do anything reckless. I'll try to get to the announcement room as fast as I can. I'll be waiting for you. If the enemy's still around, it's not a good idea if he finds out that Risa can use her Persona to contact us. I make sure Risa is actually disconnected before I turn back to Teddy. Teddy, wait here. Look after Miss President for me. Gotcha! I'm always up for spending time with a pretty girl like her! He's such a spaz. This is not the time to be fawning over cute girls, even ones as hot as Miss President. There's a bad guy out there trying to destroy our friendships, and there's people outside shooting fireworks. The 4th of July was a few fucking weeks ago, assholes. You really don't have to do it. You were doing it for like a week before and like a week after. Anyway, sorry about that. Maybe he can be so easy going about this because he truly believes that nothing could drive a wedge between us. Jeez, what am I thinking? Whether that's true or not, he did take down Kanji. <laughs> I can trust him to look after Miss President. Anyway, now that Risa's checked, there's one thing that I'm certain of. The true identity of General Teddy? I'm sure he's my shadow. I mean, he's the only one who would bother setting this Grand Prix up just for me. I don't know why he's come back, but maybe I've lost my resolve or something. I was hoping that he would just disappear once I figured out what was happening, but I guess things aren't going to be that easy. Jeez, the thought of Teddy being the culprit was pretty hard to swallow, but this is even worse. I mean, this is completely my fault. <sighs> Looks like I'm just gonna have to pay my shadow another visit. But just as I make up my mind and try to leave the classroom, Miss President blocks my path. Wait, what's going on? I demand an explanation! There's no time for that. Sorry, but you can ask Teddy about it. I heard you say just a moment ago that this Grand Prix is for you. In which case, I gotta ask you, as student council president, if you're going to the announcement room, you gotta let me come too. You can explain things to me once we're there. You can't come with me. It's too dangerous. I'm just gonna lay it on the line for you here. That power you saw when we fought is called the Persona. And this is no normal tournament. I'll be fine. I'm plenty strong, you know. But you can't use a Persona. And this isn't a normal school either. How can I explain this? I'm the one that said I'm going to the announcement room first. Don't be a copycat. Huh? That's not your problem, miss. I'm all ready to give her a verbal smackdown, but the look on her face is so serious that I have to pause. She eventually begins to speak with embarrassment. <sighs> what she said over the PA bothered me. All that about how I'd get in the way. As student council president, I gotta have a talk with her about this. Does she mean the PA be her when I first met her? 
You aren't worth anyone's effort. You just let you just get in the way and cause trouble for the people around you. Don't let it get to you. It was just a stunt to make the Grand Prix exciting. Wait, huh? If this Grand Prix is all for me and she's got caught up in it, what's the point of belittling her like that? Of course it bothers me. I like this school. She whimpers slightly. Dude, she's like a different person from the confident girl I met before. Uh, fine, I guess it can't be helped. I am to blame for all this happening to her, but I can't just admit it like that. So I smile jokingly and hold on my hand. Then how about going on a date with me? A romantic getaway in the announcement room. Yosuke kun. All right, you're on. Whoa, even she's only going along with a joke. I asked her out and she said yes. Awesome. Wait, what about me? I want to go on a date too. You can't leave me out. Suffer. Oh, sorry, you lost so you can't leave. Don't worry though, we'll be back soon. No, the date slipped through my claws. <laughs> Miss President, Yosuke is a nice, dependable guy. Not as much as me though. Aw, thanks for looking after me this far. I'm glad to find out you're not the culprit. See ya, be a good bear, okay? Miss President and I leave the classroom together. Teddy desperately tries to follow, but the invisible wall stops him cold. He keeps charging at the wall, but every time he does, he just bounces off like a tennis ball being tossed against a glass window. When he finally gives up, he waves his stubby little arms to cheer us on. Yosuke, you better not lose! You gotta protect Miss President! And don't try anything funny with her! Shut up! I'm not you! That Teddy, well, that's just how he is, you know. It's, uh, sexual harassment is just, you know, paramount. Man, I kind of want to smack him, but I'm smiling all the same. The visible walls blocked away as usual. I'm starting to feel really anxious, but I can't let it show. I know that would make Miss President here worry. We're making progress, slowly but surely. I have to keep trusting that we'll get there. I really like this school. That was unexpected. Well, I'm not surprised, since you ran for student council president. Good job winning that, by the way. Oh yeah, what's your name? My name? I mean, I can't call you Miss President forever, right? I guess your name was on the posters around school during elections, but I tend to ignore those. No offense. She clams up, so I try to get her to open up a little more. What she says next takes me by surprise. My name? I, I don't know. Huh? I can't remember it at all. I've been trying all this time, but I can't even remember what I was doing before now. Same goes for my name. I completely forgot that I must have a real name too, until you asked me about it. That ain't normal, is it? I wonder why that's happening to me. Uh, it's probably because you've been in here for a long time. You've seen a bunch of other weird things in here, right? Well, now that I think about it, the victims who were dropped into this world had scrambled memories with bits and chunks missing. So it's definitely possible that she can't remember her name. Oh, you mean like those persona and shadow things? What are those? She seems really upset about this. I bet that's only putting more pressure on her. She's seen a lot. Maybe an explanation would help her calm down a little. I decide to answer every question she has, one at a time. Well, a shadow is another side of you. It's what you're not conscious of, or more like the feelings you didn't want to admit you had. Everyone has a side like that, an ugly part of themselves, and most people hate to admit it exists. But if you accept it, it becomes a persona, a power that can protect you. So you have to accept yourself. I went through that once, but it seems like my shadow's back. Well, I'll just have to accept it again. I sure hope that's all I have to do. Of course, I can't say that part out loud. I talked like I was confident, but in reality, I'm really nervous. How can I be smiling when I'm so worried? It's crazy, right? I look at her to try to gauge how she's feeling. It sounds rough. You think since I can't remember anything, the same's happening to me? Don't worry, I'm sure you're just in a little bit of shock right now. Oh great, now I've got her all nervous too. Trying to cheer her up, I try to play up the good parts. You remember that you're the student council president, right? I'm sure you just need a little help to remember everything else. You think so? <laughs> You've been a real big help, Yosuke-kun. Huh? Me? 
Did I do something? Mm-hmm. You sure have. She finally smiles. It's only a little one, but it's there. Huh? Is this really the first time I've seen her smile? Ah, damn, she is really cute. I start to get embarrassed about having faked asking her out on a date, and my feet speed up. Crap, no one literally running away from her. Talk about chicken-hearted. 